Hey, this is Jerry from Blitz Studio. And in this particular tutorial, we are going to take our sheet and then we create a goal. And then with that goal, we're gonna move the sheep into the goal by moving the player. And then every time one of the jelly sheep are added to the goal, we're going to update a UI with a score. And if you're ready to get started, let's go. And here we're back in Unity. So what are we gonna be doing? We are going to go ahead and start working on our jelly sheep. Now, the thing that we need to do is with the jelly sheep, we're controlling the movement, but we're not having anything else to do with the jelly. So what we wanna do is to create a goal that the user moves, and then because the user is moving, the jellies are moving in the opposite direction. We need to have a goal where all of those jellies need to go so that they can then add to the score, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna do this within the prefab. And so I have my prefabs folder and I got my jelly sheet. So let's go ahead and open that up. So here's my jelly sheet. And I need to go ahead and set up an FSM specifically for detection of the goal. If we've hit the goal, then let's go ahead and destroy that sheep. And then we're gonna go ahead and add to a score. All right. So what we're gonna do is to add a new FSM. So we'll add a new FSM. And we'll just call this Jelly Score. Okay, so we have that set up. Let's go back to our main scene real quick. We're gonna go ahead and to create a goal for our sheep to get to, okay? So let's go ahead, I'm gonna create just a 3D game object. We'll just make it a cube. And I know that the size of each of these little panels is just a, a little smaller than 0.5. So let's go ahead and just make it a little bit smaller than that. Let's go uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And then on the Y, I'm going to go ahead and just take that down so that it's just, you know, a small thing. Now, I should be spending just a little bit of time making this look really nice and neat, but this works. Okay, so by default, we have a box collider set up for this. And I also want this to be a trigger. So I want the jelly cube to detect when it hits that, then we're going to do something. All right, so we'll go ahead and with this box collider, we're going to go ahead and choose is trigger. We want to be able to, to detect if our jellies have touched that. Okay. The other thing we need to do is to go ahead and tag this. By default, there's a tag that is set up as finish. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and tag this cube as finish. Now, I'm not gonna worry about any special effects or anything with the goal for right now, but this, this works. Okay, so we have this set up and we'll go ahead and just call this goal. And that's where we want the user to move all of our jellies into this one little spot. All right, so we have that going on. So we have it tagged. Let's go ahead and then go back into our jelly sheet. All right, so we need to go into that new FSM that we created. Let's go ahead and call this goal reached. All right, so what we wanna do is just to have this sitting on idle. We wanna detect if our jelly has touched that cube, okay? So we're gonna do this. We're gonna do a trigger event so we have trigger event right here. So let's double click on that. Okay, so it's saying we need to add a rigid body. So let's go ahead and add a rigid body. So rigid body right here. So we've got that. We do not want to use gravity. Okay, so we're gonna turn that off. And then the other thing that we need to do is we need to add a, a collider. Now there's currently a collider on this cylinder. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that because I don't want that to be there. So let's go ahead and remove. And then I want there to be a collider on my main jelly sheep. So let's go ahead and add a collider. So we're gonna add a box collider. And that works. And of course it's a little on the big side. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the size of this collider down. So let's go 0 0.4, 0 0.4. And then on the Y axis, it needs to be a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just see exactly where this collider is at. And I think that works. So it kind of lets us, you know, have a nice size for the jelly. And let's go ahead and just maybe take this down to 0.3 and 0.3. Okay, so it's now the size of our little uh, cylinder that we have there. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. All right, 
So let's go ahead and do this. So we have our trigger event. So if our jelly has hit a trigger, we need to say what trigger do we want to hit? So on trigger enter, we want to collide with the tag of finish because that's what we set our goal up as, as a tag of finish. Then we need to send an event. Okay, so we don't have an event set up. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And I want to add to score. Okay, so I'm going to have add to score as a, an event. And then let's just go ahead and use that event here. And we're going to, it's saying, hey, we don't have that transition. So let's go ahead and add that transition. And I'm going to transition over to a new state. So we're going to add to a state and we'll call this add to score. Okay, so we need to actually set up something that's going to be our score. All right, so what we're going to do is to, I'm going to create a new game object. So I'll create an empty. We'll call this game manager. And then inside this game manager, I want to go ahead and create a FSM. And we're going to keep score here. So game score. All right. And then with that, we need to go ahead and create a variable. OK, so this is where we're going to store the score of the game. And so we're going to have this be an int. So an int is a whole number and we're going to call this score. Cool. So we've got that set up. Our value starts out as zero. That's exactly what we need it to be. All right. So let's go back to our Jelly Sheet prefab. And go back into our goal reached. So add to score. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a send event by name. So when our jelly has reached that goal, we're going to add to score. What we're going to do is we're going to send event by name. OK, so let's go ahead and send event. And there we go. Send event by name. It's one of my recents. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can either detect where our game manager is and then find the score in there, then add to it. Or we can just do a broadcast all. OK. So what I'm going to do is add an event that's called add to score. All right. So we're, we have that event. And what I'm going to do is go back over to my game manager. And then here we want to go ahead and add a new event. OK, so this is going to be a global event. So we're going to go add to score. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a global transition of add to score. And with that send event by name and it broadcasts, this thing will be listening for that broadcast and then we can do what it, whatever we want here. So in this case, we want to add to our variable that we've created that's called score. OK, so here we've got this. Let me go ahead and just change the state name to be add to score. OK, so this thing's just going to be sitting here. And whenever a sheep calls to it, it's saying, hey, add to score, we need to go ahead and add one to our score. So let's do this. We're going to do an int add because that variable is an integer. We're going to do an int add and we need to say which which integer or which variable. And we've got score and we're just going to add one to that. And we don't need to do this every frame. We're just doing it once. OK, and every time it gets called, we'll add one. So let's we've got that set up. Let's go back to our jelly sheep. And back into our goal reached. And so we've got in this add to score, we're broadcasting to say, hey, add to score. And then we also once we're done with this, we need to actually destroy this game object. OK, so we're going to go ahead and just do a finished event. So we'll do finished. And then go to a new state. And we'll call this destroy self. Because we don't want this to be on screen anymore. And so then we're going to do a destroy. Destroy self. That's the action that we want to use. And there we go. So it's going to once our jelly reaches the goal, it's going to add one to our score and then it's going to destroy itself. So let's give this a test real quick to see how this works. Oh, and my jellies are flying. OK, so let's take a look, see what's happening here. 
And in my box collider, because the box co collider goes below the other game objects, it's kind of pushing those up and then they're kind of flying into space. So all we need to really do is just click is trigger on and then we're, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and give this a test real quick. And I'm going to go back into before I move, I'm going to go back into my game manager. And here's our variable that is our score. Let's go ahead and keep track of this. So if I move my character and I get my first sheep in the goal, boom, that gets destroyed and my now has one. So now I need to get these other two sheep here. Try to get those other two sheep. Oh, I can't quite get there. So let's get all the way to the edge. There we go. Now those other two sheep have added to our score. We now have a score of three. Now, the only problem that I'm seeing right now is that because I'm following the character with my camera, I'm getting part of the board cut off. So that's a, a camera issue, but you can see that that part works. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to add a UI real quick. So let's go ahead and create a new empty game object. And we'll call these UIs. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a new UI text mesh pro. Okay, so that's gonna create a canvas and a text mesh pro game object. So we want this to be score. And then let's go ahead and double click on this. And we want to first make sure our canvas is set up. So we're gonna do screen space overlay, which is fine. In the canvas scaler, we're gonna do a scale with screen size. And then the size that we want to match is um, kind of a mobile format here. So I'm gonna do 640 by 1136. There we go. And we're gonna do expand. Okay, so that way we know that our text is gonna be the exact size that we need it to and where it's gonna expand if we need it to. Okay, so let's go ahead and move this kind of into place. Let's just change the score at it kind of to the top of the screen. Let's go ahead and center that text. Let's go ahead and bold it. And we're just gonna do XXXX. So this is uh, where the score would be. And let's go ahead and just make this text just a little bit bigger. So I'll do 60. Yeah, I think that works. Cool. All right, so this is our score. So let's go ahead and change the text to be score. And then we need to update our score. Okay, so currently I have this text as XXXXX, um, but we want to have this be based off of that variable. All right, so we're gonna go back to our game manager. In this first start state, we want to update this text to be what that variable is, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna change that int to a string. Now this is a text box, which can only contain a string. So we need to convert what our variable is into a string. So we're gonna go ahead and do int string. So convert int to string, so we'll double click on that. So what variable is it that we wanna update? We wanna take the score. We're going to create a new variable that is a string and we'll call this score text. So we're taking that variable that's an integer and changing it into a string. We need to go ahead and do this every frame. We're gonna continually add to that score, so we need to continually update this number, okay? So here we're just converting from an into a string, but we need to actually update that text that's in our UI with this new score text, okay? So what we're gonna do, easy way to do that is to just drag our score down into our window. We're gonna update our text mesh pro. We're gonna set property. And then what property is it that we wanna update? We wanna update our text. So if we scroll all the way down the bottom, there's a lot of different stuff here. So we're gonna update the text and right there you can see string. So this is the actual text that's in that box. And we're gonna update it with a variable. So let's go ahead and uncheck use variable. And then we're gonna update it with our score text. So here we're taking the, the variable of an integer, changing it to a text, storing that in a new variable called score text then we're gonna update that text that's in that box with that score text. So let's go over to our score text real quick. So we're adding to that number. 
but we need to then, once we've added to this number, go back over here to the game score to update that text, okay? So let's go ahead and do an, a finished event here. So we're gonna do finished event, just transition back over to our game score. So anytime we add to the score, here we're gonna update our score, okay? So let's give this a test real quick. So we should play and this should start out at zero. There we go, we start out at zero. So as soon as I get my first jelly into the goal, so let's go back into, see where my jelly sheep are here, okay? So there's my first jelly and we've got a score update. And oh, I can't get those in. So let's go over, move our character over. Now I've got the next jelly and the last one we've scored three. Cool, so there we go. We now are updating our score. We have our jellies adding to our score as soon as we herd them into the goal. Hopefully this was a great tutorial and you learned a little bit from it and that helps you with your project. Again, don't hesitate to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time, peace.